You've seen him in some of your favorite shows, and now he's here in the studio, and we're putting the spotlight on his amazing career. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Are you supposed to be rapping right now? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You don't have to. <laughs> if you don't want to. Man, I haven't heard this song in a while. Yeah, it's a classic, right? it, and it's sampled all the time. That's so awesome. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here. I'm Ivana Williams, your host for today's segment of Spotlight On. And I have in the studio with me Mr. Melvin Jackson Jr. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Yes, this is awesome. I have so much to talk about. Before we started the show, I was saying that, you know, when I was going through your press kit and your press release, I was like, I have to have this interview because your career, I mean, you've you've been in so many shows and I was like, oh, snap, he was at, oh, snap, okay. <laughs> Do you get that sometimes? Yeah, like, it's, what's the it's, wire? It's interesting because at the beginning when I, when I did the wire, like a lot of, I was on a train and stuff and people were like, he looked familiar. Like, they, I, I would just like <laughs> right. let him play. Like, we went to school together. Like, nah, you went to, and I'm like, I'm like, did you ever, you know, watch The Wire? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm like, you're like 15 years old. What you don't watch The right. Wire? So it was interesting just, you know, getting people to recognize you. And they don't know where from. And to, you know, it caught them like, oh, yeah, The Wire. Yeah. So let's go back a little bit early on in your career. Because at first, you started managing artists. Yes. How did you do that? At what age? I was 18. About, it's my first year in college. Okay, how? Um, I knew that. <laughs> I love music. I always love music. Um, and I just, you know, felt like I wanted to help artists that, that couldn't get an opportunity. So I decided to, to manage artists. And, and you know, being young, I wasn't going to let that get in my way. So I just started making my business my business card, came up with a name, and then I just started hustling. And, you know, my first artist I, I met, um, I, I forgot how I met him or whatever, but I ended up managing him, getting him into different, you know, um, performances and then I managed my, my cousins and it just went from there and then I started like just end up from talking to the A&Rs on the phone to like sitting in in their offices talking to you know the the re vice presidents of like the big records like J Records and all those so it was just all about wow. being persistent yeah absolutely and, and so like I knew what I wanted to do and I and I emulated Puffy like I was people call me like the young Puffy so I, I figured like I wanted to be a business person like him and, and just take over Wow. Okay. And so then you got into acting. Yes. And from there you were doing The Wire, just to name a few, rather. Right. You did The Wire. You and Everybody Hates Chris, The New Edition Story, as Curtis Blow, and now you're going to be on a full biopic, right, yes. for Curtis Blow. Yes. That is so awesome. So at what point did you move to acting? When did you get from the business side to being in front <laughs> of the camera? I always say, like, I slipped and fell into acting because I never really pursued acting or th thought about it. Um, until I was with a modeling agency, and then they had me audition for a PSA, and I, no acting experience at all, no training. Um, I went in there and I booked it, and from there, I, when I did the PSA, I was like, hmm, this is something I'm good at. Let me let me take a stab at it. And from that point on, I just really started watching movies like Denzel and Samuel Jackson. I started watching the, them not for the entertainment purpose, but learning like how can I implement my own style but taking a little bit of what they have. And so I just started mm -hmm. doing that and preparing myself and saying, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it seriously. And so I remember, like, I was telling my artist, like, no, nah, I don't really want to pursue acting because what about you guys? And he was like, we'll follow behind you. So he was like, you know, you make a name and then we'll be able to follow in the doors. And, and he was right. You know, with being on The Wire, it helped me get into more record labels, mm -hmm. you know, and and get phone calls more than I be before. But then the attention turned to me. They're like, well, what are you doing? Right. And so I, I felt like, you know, I love managing artists, love it. But, of course, in the business, you'll... In managing, you don't make a lot, lot of money. You know, the artists or the performers or whoever makes a lot of money. So I'm always like, if I'm working hard, why not get what I put in, you know, in return? So that's why, you know, when I was like, I sort of got the first check as an actor, I'm like, hmm, I, li I like getting 100% yeah. right now than over 15 to 20%. Hmm. So I, I felt like, you know, acting was, was what I wanted to do. And I pursued it and I came out to L.A. and the rest was history. I've always wondered how that works because, like, does the so the artist gets paid first, or is it everybody else, and then the money trickles down to the artist? <laughs> like that's always been confusing. Well, with for me. music, with music, it goes from the songwriters to producers, right? And you know, the artist is probably like the last person to get paid. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and that's the crazy thing about it. Unless you're writing the songs, unless you're 
hands on. You're you're pretty much getting the last drop of the of whatever's left, and mm-hmm. so the label gets recoups their money, and so that's just the inter- interesting b- nature of the business. Like you have yeah. to know the business. So I always tell artists, that's it. Learn the business. Don't just take my word for mm-hmm. it. And for me, I always felt like I want to make sure that when I represent people, that I I do it with integrity to where they they are feel respected in a sense that we're like I'm not just trying to take advantage of them. So I'm always have their best interests. Yeah. And a lot of times. It's not always the case. There's, you know, you hear horror stories about managers taking yeah. all the artists' money. They have no money. And yeah. I'm just like, I'm not that person. I can't I can't look at myself in the mirror knowing that I did somebody wrong. So that was never my, my nature of business. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of why I am still here because, you know, I could have been rich a long time ago, but I would have yeah. had to stab somebody in the back and steal and rob. Oh, and I was Lord just Jesus. like, no, please don't. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, no. <laughs> right. It's, that, wasn't, we, yeah. that wasn't me. That wasn't God's intent for me. So I do have to ask, you know, going to, so, you know, going into your acting career, The Wire is also a cult classic. Like, every time people see, like, just The Wire, like, yo, yeah. that show, yeah. my God. So I do want to know, how was your experience on The Wire? It was great. It, it's a backstory to it because um, I always tell people this. Um, I started off as an extra on The Wire. Mm-hmm. And that, that wasn't the way I wanted to, but it was. I think it was intended to, to, for me to learn. Because I, I kept submitting myself to be on there, and then if, if for some reason I got a phone call to be an extra, and I was like, "How much I paying? Fifty six thousand? I'm like, I'm good. I'm making more of my job. Like I'm okay." And so I, they kept calling me, and I was like, Man, "Wait, they're you... paying fifty six thousand to be an extra? No, no, fifty dollars for oh, eight hours." Oh, okay. I was like, "No, no, I didn't no, hear that right." Fifty dollars for like eight hours, <laughs> okay. and so I was like, uh, "No, I'm good." Um, so I just after the third time, I was like, "Well, maybe this is a test. Maybe God's testing me. I don't know." So I was like, "All right, I'll do it." And sure enough, I did it, and I yeah. learned a lot, and I met Wood Harris, and me and him exchanged numbers, and we connected on music, and just, like, it was just love. I just mm-hmm. saw, like, I, I wasn't even sitting with the extras. I was sitting with the main cast, even though I wasn't supposed to. I was like, let me <laughs> let me network. Hey, squeeze in. And so, sure. you know, second season came, I started auditioning, and third season, after 15 auditions, and then the final callback, the cast director was like, go in there. She's like, do what you did the other day. You got this. And I went in there and I owned it. I feel like Bernard was me. Bart Bernard was my character. Right. And I went in there with the producers and everybody, and I, and I nailed it. That's dope. And I got the phone call. And I was at work, and I used to thought I won a million dollars when they told me I got the job. And I was like, <laughs> man. And You're walked right. on set, and it was just different. It was like being a, going from being a janitor to now part of the company. Mm. It, was, it was a great experience. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That sounds, oof. <laughs> My heart. So um, you were also in the new edition story. Yes. I loved watching yes. that. I oh my god, I loved it so much. And I think it exceeded all of our expectations. Uh, I didn't. I I mean, I went in with an open mind. I didn't right. know what to expect, but it blew me away. Yeah. Um, and you played Curtis Blow. How did you talk with Curtis beforehand, or you just went in? And did it? Um, I actually didn't talk to Curtis Blow. Okay. Um, I met him be- before I didn't even know about the movie. Um, but I didn't get a chance like to talk to him. So it was pretty much once I this is I, I, I can't really tell this story. I gotta tell this backstory. So okay. I almost walked away from acting. I almost was like, let me put acting on the back burner, mm. let me be a producer full time. But of course to be a producer, a working producer, you have to start from the beginning. You have to start from the bottom. Mm. So you have to be a PA, production assistant, and then go from that point on. Yeah. So I was willing to do that. I was willing to the person that I am, actor Put that to the side. Put my ego to the side and say, let me start from the bottom. I'll be a PA. I'll do all these things so I can be a working actor to me and working producer to help other people that don't have the opportunity. So I said, God, if this is what you want me to do, you know, I love acting. But if this is what you want me to do, let me know. Give me the sign and I'll do it. So wait, even with being on The Wire and Everybody Hates Chris, you went back to being a PA? I said I would. That, oh, okay. that, that, that was what my mindset was right. cause, because I wanted to do this producing full time so I can yeah. help other people that okay. wasn't getting the opportunity. So I said, if this is what you want me to do, you give me the sign. The, the, what the sign was, the audition for the new edition. I, so I got the, the um, I was at my job, and I got the, the um, email, and I was like, oh, new edition. Oh, Curtis Blow. Oh, the same day. So I had literally like an hour to get to, to the audition and really prepare. I didn't have time to look at, look, prepare. I looked at the sides, and I just had to go off of, of a gut yeah. instincts. And so I went in there, auditioned. Um, you know, got got the call, um, the pin saying that my agent was like, you know, you've been pinned by the networks. You're one of the top choices. A couple of days later, got the call saying I got it. So with all that, I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. Like, this is like, 
a recharge of my career reboost. And this is before I've even walked on set. And I'm like, okay, now I have to deliver. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching, you know, Crush Groove. I'm <laughs> right. watching Curtis Blow's <laughs> interviews. I'm like, how do you know? Because I didn't go in there. To get all the right. information. I didn't absorbed. go in there into the audition with all accent on anything. Trying to, I just w went in as, as embody him as a person. Yeah. So with all that, I was like, okay, now I have to deliver. Now I'm on a big scale. Now mm -hmm. I'm on BT. Now I'm working with my boy Chris Robinson. Mm -hmm. All these other people. Now I have to deliver. So going on set, it was just like amazing, amazing. Yeah. When I walked on, when I, after they put me in hair and makeup, I embodied him. Mm -hmm. Like I became Curtis Blow. Like you, and that, I wasn't trying to be him. I just embodied him. And where exactly did they shoot your scenes? We shot at the Globe Theater, which is um, downtown. Okay. Um, in L.A. and you know, I it was it was a, the one of the best experiences I've had as an actor outside of the wire. Like it was because New Edition is my one of my favorite groups, and I know a couple of the members. And, you know, here I am playing a legend, legend, you know, a person who opened up the doors for Jay-Z, yeah. Nas, all these people who was the king of New York at the time. What a and humbling experience. So it was it was like, oh, it was crazy. It How was, was like, the energy on set? I feel like y'all were just wilding out. Energy was amazing. Everybody yeah. was professional. Everybody came to work. And then I got a chance to work with Wood Harris again. So that was like full circle. That's, yeah. that's my, so it was it was just amazing. Every, the kids you you saw it. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they were amazing. I was sitting there watching them like I gotta hate on these kids. In this movie. Why? Like they're so good. Like and it, and it was like you saw them yeah. perform and you that was like that's new addition right there. Yeah. So shout out to Brooke Payne and, and Leon and all of them for for getting them ready because mm -hmm. that that was not an easy task. Yeah. So how did you go from that and being able to move on to getting a full biopic? Like how what? <laughs> well, before the movie the movie new edition movie came out, I had a conversation with Curtis. I'm like you know. I would love to tell your story. Like, you have a, you know, people need to hear your story. Mm -hmm. I think that you should, you know, do a biopic. And so we had the conversation, and then, the, you know, the movie came out, and, you know, he had his, you know, ill will feeling about it. And, you know, I, we get we get it. You know, everything mm -hmm. is not always going to be in the favor of the artist. But we like, well, well let's, let's tell your story now. You know, people right. didn't get to see the full story, but let's tell your story, how you came about it, and other things that people don't know about. Mm -hmm. So I, me being a producer that I am, I'm like already thinking, like, we need to tell your story. So when I started doing the Emmy campaign and people was watching the new edition story, they like, you need you need to tell the Curtis Blow, Curtis Blow story. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I in my back of my mind, I'm like, it's it's coming. <laughs> and so just wait. So we began the conversation with him and you know getting him on board, getting an option agreement, and now trying to work on facilitating everything so that we can move forward to the next. Because I was about stage. to ask, are y'all still in pre-production? Yeah, we're in development right now. Uh -huh. um, so I have a genuine attached to it as well. He's a good friend of mine from DC. And uh, we just continue to build, and now we're just going into getting everything situated so we can go into the script phase and then go from there. When I saw Genuine's name, I'm like, okay, so what is <laughs> so, is he going to be like a character? Is he in production? What is what is he he's doing? Gonna, he's going to be one of the uh, characters in the movie. Can he spill? Uh, not at this moment. It is, but it's gonna be um, it's gonna be some interesting people in the in the movie. Um, I mean, we already know who was involved with the whole curse bowl, you know, from Fat Boys, Run DMC, mm -hmm. um, who act Reverend Run was actually his DJ. If a lot of people don't know that, so it's a lot of history, a lot of things that yes. um, that people don't know about Curtis Blow, and even his relationship with Malcolm X and Sh Betty Shabazz and all those people. Mm -hmm. So it's. It's, it's going to be interesting. So do you still, so you do still keep in touch with Curtis? Absolutely, Blow. absolutely. How often do y'all? Every now and then, like I just talked to him uh, a couple of days ago through text and, you know, we just try, try to stay in touch and let him know what's going on and definitely um, he's very hands-on with this production and it's his story so we want to make sure we right. tell it right and we, we get um, the best result in the sense of him being okay with what we're doing. How did you become to embody Curtis Blow? Like what were some of the characteristics that you had to pick up on? Like some of the minor details? Well, that definitely it was the uh, I guess um, it's the walk, it's the 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 how I would say just his bravado, how you have it. Like you from New York, so you have that different feel. Yeah. So it's like you know New York guys, they they territorial. It's, it's just <laughs> yeah. like you know, Talk yo, what's so up, hard. son? You know, what's up? And so with him, it was just <laughs> like he was the man back then. So mm -hmm. I just had to live in the moment. I didn't have to do too much, and I, I think I I did what I did without even having to think about it. Like, sometimes mm -hmm. the actors were like, okay, you need to do this, and it just happened. Mm -hmm. it, I embodied it, so where I don't, I don't even know what exactly I did. Chris Robinson brought that out of me. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great thing as a director when so they bring the best out of you and challenge you every time. We're like, boom, let's go, let's go. To where people who know Curtis Blow is like, that's Curtis Blow. And I wasn't trying to be him. I just embodied him. Mm -hmm. and that And that was the spirit of what was in the room. Everybody embodied each other. 
you know, mm-hmm. Woody McClain body, Bobby Brown, you know, Bashir Gray, but you know, everybody, yeah. you know, Algie Smith and body Ralph, he looks, you know what I mean? So everybody embodied each person that they're portraying. And that was, that's the spirit of the film. Yeah. You know, that's nothing but God. And, and Robbie Reed spoke of that as well. And so I think when you have that magic mm-hmm. in this room, in this project, there's no, there's no, there's nothing that you can say, take credit for, but say that's God because mm-hmm. this, 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 it took 10 years to make this film. And so here we are, like everybody was, was picked specifically for the role that they, they have. So it's no mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Wow. That's so dope. Did you ever used to rap or freestyle before? Yeah. I used to, I used okay. to being around an artist, I used to have me rapping up my uh, alter ego is Jay Reed. So I said, I want to do one, <laughs> one, one album that was always on my goal, my list, uh, one album and I'm done. I'm not trying to pursue an act, uh, um, career as a rapper, but mm-hmm. just do my one great Hip hop album. It may take a year or two to make it, but why I just, just one, just just to get it out, just to express yourself. Why just yeah, just, one? just just because I ne- I never wanted to to be an, an artist because I know the business of it. I just you know I just wanted to make good music, and so I always looked at making music like making singles. So I said, I album. I want my album to be singles, mm-hmm. but but I want them also the songs to have a meaning. Like I have you know songs that I'm gonna talk about. You know suicide depression and all these things that that has that has happened and so you know i want it to be a message if i'm just going to do it i want to also have fun with it and i want to make sure that it 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 relevant to what's going on as well Mm -hmm. so i mean i just are you working on that now at the same time or that's going to come i'm I'm starting to start writing okay so the thing is is that i'm doing so much that i don't want to yeah i'm saying being an artist that that's that's a whole nother thing you know outside of what else i'm doing so yeah my focus it is definitely a producer because mm-hmm. I, I feel like it embodies everything, the actor side, the writing side of everything that I'm doing. And I feel like if I stepped out and try to be this artist full time, it's going to take me away from other things that need my attention a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I'd say I just wanted just one album and then I'm good. I mean, whatever happens, something happens from there, then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. So but, with that, yeah. So with that, were you saying you were rapping and freestyling? So I guess like trying to imitate right. Curtis Blow came a little bit easier yeah. then for you. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> How many raps do you have to memorize? Uh, I didn't actually. I didn't have to rap in the movie. And, um, I was upset about that because I was like, I really wanted to perform. So every time so I kept getting. So you're not rapping us, it. You know. Nah. Oh no! In the in the biopic, yeah, yeah. I'm in the, no, the biopic. In the biopic, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying the new edition movie, I was. I was no, 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 no. I'm asking, yeah. So in the biopic, like, how many do you? We're have still to working memorize? on. The, we haven't done the script yet, so uh, everything. But I'm sure you know it'll be it'll be it'll be a lot. You up for the challenge? I'm up for the challenge. That's good. That's yeah, good. I, want, I want to tell the story, so I want to make sure that it's done well. And you know, I looked at you know as Trey Out Compton as the blueprint. You mm-hmm. know, if, we, if you do something just as great as that, I think that that's what the the <laughs> it was on the totem pole. So you got to meet that. So mm-hmm. all the biopics after that have to meet that, and that's that's mm-hmm. the gift and the curse in a sense. Yeah. But yeah. they did such a great job that you you have to even be as good as them or better. That's just what it is. So you have to take it that serious. Speaking of challenges, um, I know that right now you are very busy with the Curtis Blow biopic. But there, are there any other roles that you would like to play? Uh, you know, further in your career, like something that may be more challenging or something. Eddie Murphy. You want to portray Eddie Murphy? Yes. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> why? Um, because he's one of the reasons why I got into the business. He's one of the reasons why um, I want to say, one of the reasons I got into acting as well as a comedy. And I, he just has a, a, a story. And I, people tell me I look like him all the time. I'm not trying to go out and look like him, but it's just like I, I get that. <laughs> I don't even be you trying. Know, even like... people that 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 is like his family, you know. So it's just you know. With that being said, I'm like, okay, people keep saying I look like him, then. I'll portray him. And so okay. now I just, that mean that with that being said, that just means I have to do the work and try to get his voice, got his laugh. I can, you know, that I can get, I got that. But the, the voice and all the things that he does because he's such a, a big person. And have you it, met him yet? Yes, I have. Oh, how was that? It was good. Like at, at the moment, I don't think I was getting Eddie, the Eddie Murphy thing as much. So it was like I met him. I didn't, we didn't even take a picture. I just met him. Hey, man, how oh, you doing? Okay. I look forward to working with you one day. And oh. that was kind of it. Um, but I didn't even take a picture and haven't seen him since because he don't really go out like that. Yeah. But I see like all his his family and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know. Kurt, Besides he, biopics, is there something else? I don't know if you ever done any like crime, martial arts, some sci-fi, any uh, other genres that you would like I've to? I've always wanted to do like a martial arts film. Like I yeah. look at um, 
like John Wick and like stuff when you're shooting and you're, and you're doing the hand to hand combat. Mm-hmm. Like I always wanted to do that in a dance movie is one of my things that I that I want to okay. do. Okay, I want to <laughs> do a dance movie. What kind of dance? Uh, like like Step Up. I was in Step Up, so I've always you know I, like Step Up, Stomp, uh, Stomp the Yard, yeah. stuff like that. So like that's in the in the in the process. Like I'm already like working on getting with yeah. the choreographers to to. Because, I mean, I've been dancing since I was a kid, but, like, professionally, I want to get the whole, you know, the Chris Brown. So, hip-hop and, yeah. and breaking right. and stuff. That's dope. Yeah. Okay. And you'd be the lead or you'd be, like, teaching no, be the young... Okay. Listen, I mean, okay. you know, listen, okay. I mean, it's, it's cool being supporting, but, you know, you want to be the lead sometimes. I, no, I totally understand. You know, sometimes when people are creating something, like, you know, I don't even have to be in it. I don't have to be the lead. Certain things. It don't have to right. be about me. So no, there's certain like, things that, I, that I, I I don't have to be in it that, I, you know, if I want to tell a story, yeah. I'll do that. But dance, this dance, that's a I want to yeah. do that. I want to be in that. So you're from D.C. Yes. And you moved out here to L.A. Well, how long have you been in L.A.? Ten years. Ten yeah. years. I always ask people, you know, because it's very rare that I actually meet people who are from L.A. Right. And so I know, like, been out in D.C., I've been to D.C. before, too, and I really enjoyed the food. Yeah. So was it a culture shock for you, like, the food from D.C. and then coming to L.A.? <laughs> I, I always mean, had to ask people. <laughs> not really a culture shock. You know what you're getting into. I mean, L.A. has a little bit more variety. Um, but LA, I mean DC, you know, you got the uh, chicken got and mumble sauce, food. chicken and mumble yeah. sauce is our thing. You carry out, so that's the difference. You know, there's no carry outs out here. There's, you can't go mm. and, and get you. Like I went home recently, and I was like, man, I missed the carry out. I'm like looking at the menu, like these things are inexpensive. Like LA, you don't have that. Yeah. Um, so that's the things you miss. LA, you got like seafood. Postmates or something. And you have the seafood. Yes. So yeah, it, it was definitely like okay. I miss the seafood. I miss all the things that my grandma used to yes. cook. Um, That's the, when you said seafood, because I'm from, <laughs> you know, I'm from Texas, and I have you know family in Louisiana, so it's always like I can't really get crawfish. I, well, I can, right. but like it's so expensive out yeah. here, you know. So I, I really do miss the seafood, man. <laughs> And you did have a stint, actually, in Pakistan and Turkey. Yes. How did you end up there? Well, my mom used to work for the government, so I got a ch- You know, when I was a kid, about eight, I went overseas um, to Pakistan first, lived over there for about uh, four and a half years, and then had a great experience over there, international school of Islamabad. And just, you know, being wow. around different cultures yes. and learning the language and eating the different foods. Like, your system had to get used to the food. You're like, wait a minute. Um, but it was just <laughs> definitely a great, great experience. I think it changed who I am as a person um, and that that's who I am now where I'm like I don't feel like I'm just one one dimensional I'm like I'm different I can be and so many different you know inter- I can be international because I know what it, that that feeling is like and how it um, interact with other yeah. people of different races different cultures and then I went over to Turkey after that and I still keep in contact with all my friends that I, that I um, met over there and it's just a, we're just a big happy family, and um, I think I'm thankful for that, you know, yeah. because we, we we you know we had maids, we had gardeners, we had you know guards and all the things. You would think that we were rich when we went over there. We just live like kings. And this was and for co- your mom's high profile job. Yeah, we just like Good we, we, we just live like kings and queens over there. So where it's like now my mentality is like <laughs> just I know the CIA. What was the job? I know what I want. You know, it's like I, now I know what I want in life, and you know it's not about being spoiled. It's about yeah. having the things that you know the final things in life, but making sure that you stay grounded in it mm. and um yeah just so how was the food what was your favorite dish i guess out there uh what was it uh, i would say i used to go to this place called blackbeard and they had like this this chicken um sometimes like curry chicken i used to do curry chicken a lot with naan which is a different type mm-hmm. of type of bread mm-hmm. um we used to have these things called pakoras we, we used to make um it's like what is that it's almost reminds you of um pork skins but a little bit different a little not they're not as hard but they're really they're really good. Like we used to make those in school. Okay. But uh, yeah. That is very interesting because <laughs> I always want to know like how is the food in other cultures? Because I wouldn't really try it out here. I'd, right. I'd rather like travel to yeah. try it. That is very interesting. Um. So yeah, like I said, I just ask all the time. Like, how is your experience with food <laughs> out there? Because it seems wild. Yeah. Dope. So how what was what would be some of the advice that you would give younger people? Because you switched careers. You right. were more like business minded, yeah. you know, and then you, like I said, you went into acting. What is the advice that you would give other people who are looking to step from behind the desk or right. the cubicle or whatever and just really get out there and get into acting or writing, directing, right. producing? I, I would I mean, my, my goal is like I have this movement now. Where I said dream big. And you cannot um, think small, you cannot be your own enemy in a sense so where you're getting your own way it's like well i can't do this because such as i don't have this i don't have these experience i don't have that i would say just take the bull by the horn and do it if it's something mm-hmm. that you want to do don't put it off to tomorrow go and do it be responsible of course but do it because 
you always have those regrets like oh i should do this i should but no yeah. no one's gonna take me serious and i just didn't you, you got to stop caring about what other people think or what other people say because when you do that then you look for validation mm -hmm. and i say you don't need validation from anybody but yourself and god mm -hmm. and so if you already going with that mindset like i can do it my mom always told me you know these things you can do anything you put your mind to so that's been my mentality mm -hmm. so if it's something that i want to do if i put my mind to it i'm gonna get it done it may take me three four five years however long but I'm gonna get it done. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's about going out there and getting it done and, and making making a goal for yourself and, and then living out that goal. Was there any ever like nervousness or anxiety whenever you switched from, you know, managing to going into acting? No, because like any I, negative feelings like who oh, I hope this works. I don't know if it's gonna work. No, nah, because as a kid, I've always kind of been fearless. Okay. So I, I just think that if I know that I something I wanna do and I'm good at it and I'm passionate about it. Then there's no fear. Only thing that was fear was as far as comedy when I did stand up. That because now that you're on stage. You're on stage and now you have to be funny. Yeah. And I was like, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And so that's kind of why, like, I'm like, if I'm not gonna do it right, if I'm not mm -hmm. gonna put all of it in it, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to get up stage and be terrible. You know, I don't haven't got booed, but it's been times where I'm like. <sighs> Oh, it's a little quiet in here. Um, yeah, so what about those uh, red skin? You know yeah. what I mean? You just got to, it, it, it's just tough. So yeah. that's the only thing that's really been intimidating for me is to stand up, but I love it. Yeah. And so that's why I keep continuing to do it because it's a love and you got to face your fears. That's definitely on my bucket list. Like I want to try stand up, well, but my issue is dealing with like the hecklers and stuff. Like <laughs> I don't want to be out there and you know, I'm feeling good and stuff. And then some, some drunk person's like heckling me. Right. So... <laughs> How, how often did you do stand up? I did it. I was I was going doing stand ups probably three to four times a week sometimes, and then like I was doing it. For, was this early on in your career? No, this is to me. I've the last time I did it was also three two three months ago. Like I've been oh, okay. I've been doing stand up since two thousand fourteen. I want to say okay. Yeah, um, but I I kind of like say I pulled back because I was like I want to you know do it right, and I just doing too much. I was had too much on my plate. And stand up, it's kind of like it's like starting a new, it's this new career. You're yeah. pretty much starting from the bottom. You have to pave your way. You have to build your time. You go from five, three Doing minutes, the bars yeah, and three stuff. minutes to mm -hmm. five minutes to ten minutes. To, like you're like, man, you thinking like three minutes is quick on stage? It's not. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. okay. Um, and so you just have to learn, and you have to like. I'm always watching. That's why I was watching Delirious and watching Raw because. Like, you have to have that timing. You yeah. have to have everything and just like acting. And so that's what helped me with the comedy is like, I look at it as a, a play, mm -hmm. a, as a scene. You know, these are my audience. This, this is my audience that I get to win over or lose. So it's like, do I want to win them over or do I want to lose them? So you got to pick and choose what you say and what you do. And you got to make it like a conversation. And yeah. I think when you make it a conversation, then they, they're drawn into what you're saying, what you're doing. So it's like. Okay. I'm How do you here. feel about the state of comedy now, like with black comedians? Because we we had a huge rise, and then it kind of it was a downfall. Is it like an ebb and flow? How do you feel now? I mean, it's 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 still a lot of great comedians out there. Um, I, I just think that you some people don't see them because they're not televised. There's a lot of, a lot of things. Right. But if you go to these comedy clubs, there's some funny African American com um, comedians that are like, oh my god, like these dudes are hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like there's um you know there's a couple guys like i remember doing a, a show putting a show together and i just remember calling people um and having to come on my show and that was like one of the funniest shows I, i've ever seen because <laughs> we, everyone was so laughing people were laughing so hard they were running out of out of the, the um the auditorium that we had and it was laughing so hard my head was hurting like it was just that great yeah. of a night and we and people still talk about it to this day and i'm like how can we, i wanted to film it to be able to pitch that because yeah. it was such a great night yeah. And so I'm like, maybe we can try to duplicate that. But it was such a great night. I would love to, because I feel like now we only see like one or two mainstream black comedians right. here and there. And it's I, I know it's like a plethora yeah. of them out there. But I'm like, well, come on, where they at? Exactly. You know, so I don't know. I guess it's something that takes a while. It's just something that kind of comes and goes. I don't know. It, it just, I mean, like I said, with anything, you know, like, you know, Kevin Hart's the biggest thing. And then, you know, somebody else is going to be the biggest thing. Then it's, it's just it's just a wave. It's everybody, you know, has their moment. Everybody has their shot. Like you know, like it was the Eddie Murphy, then it was the Richard, you know, Richard Pryor and the Fred Fox. All those people, every like David Chappelle, like everybody has that moment. But then when they're all coming together, like you'll see the Chris Rock, the um, David Chappelle and Eddie, you know, and and um, 
Kevin Hart all joining forces, like you just it's power in numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it is. So I'm like, why is it one at a time? Right. That's what I'm. And it, and it, but it's it's what we sometimes what we see. But yeah. if you look out there, there's actually people doing shows. There's bringing other new comedians up. You know, like Kevin Hart has Heart of the City. So all these different things you have that are you know you people necessarily always don't see. But there's people opening that door for for new comics. Mm-hmm. And um, what I love about the comedy community is that people will lift each other up like Alex Tom is a good friend of mine and you know like he gave you know told me when I first wanted to do comedy he was like right there with me um Michael Collier gave me my first you know shot um so everybody's just like they just want you to win mm-hmm. there's not too many people that just want you to lose unless they're you know just haters but for the most part for me I have so many people in the comedy world that just want me to win and, and in the industry as well so that's yeah. been a good good thing for me Okay. And when you put out good energy, you get it. You, you get it in return. Do you have a preference between drama and comedy? Um, or dramedy, put them together. <laughs> I, 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 comedy, comedy works a lot. You know, f- in my favor in a sense, just mm-hmm. because it's right. It's like it's, you can just be off the cusp and, and make it happen. Drama, you know, whether I, I do good in drama too. It's, it's all about you know the scenes and everything. You really have to be focused in what mm-hmm. it is and delivering and making sure you know yeah. your objective. So drama takes a little bit more out of you, you know, whether you <laughs> yeah, got to cry, yeah. whatever you got to put yourself in. But I don't, you know, I, I think I love comedy because I'm always likes to, I like to make people laugh. Yeah. So I, I, if I had to choose, you know, com- comedy has definitely been, a, you know, a lot of opportunities have been happening for me in, in the comedy sense. But I love drama. Drama is always, you know, that was my go-to in the mm-hmm. beginning. So always got to go back to square one. And I always like to ask actors, you know, when it comes to you developing and honing your craft, really, there's the classes. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't really, they just think, Yo, let me just get some headshots and just send some stuff out. Maybe I can do a couple commercials and I'm famous. Yeah. But, like, you really have to do the classes and the networking, the workshops, all types of stuff. You, It's a lot of money that you have to pay into yourself Absolutely. for your career. And I think that's probably something that I didn't really know as much. It's, it's const- You're constantly paying right. for yourself, right. you know. It doesn't stop. Um, so did you take a lot of classes early on in your career? And if so, like, what was a, a class that really helped you? To, to, hone your craft. It was crazy um, because I didn't start taking, I didn't take acting classes until maybe 12 years into my, my, my acting career. Um, oh, okay. Um, and that, and I just, I, I did that for the purpose as far as saying I want to take an acting class because I, I, I had this mentality. I don't know if it was an ego thing. It was like, well, if I didn't, I don't have to take no acting classes. I didn't take acting classes to get in this. I'm going to say, I'm you like, got lucky. Yeah, I was like, you know, it was just being, you know, being blessed and, and me yeah. knowing, okay, even I know I had, didn't have professional training still taking it serious and still doing the work to study. And so for me, it was like, okay, I need to make sure that I, I better my craft. If Denzel's got an acting coach, if everybody, all these other people who I look up to have acting coach, what makes me any different or any better? Mm-hmm. So I started working one-on-one with the acting coach, which was amazing. And mm-hmm. she was like, you you know, she's like, you're good. She's like, she's these certain things she wanted me to, to get better at, you know, mm-hmm. in far as the auditioning process. But she was like, you got it, you, you good. So that was good hearing that. And so, because you want to, get better you know it's like michael jordan it's like kobe like you can't get better and if not practice so you yeah. can, if you don't practice your craft how can you get better yeah so that's why i started taking it serious and now I have an amazing acting teacher that i work with now called sue, uh, sue, sue hamilton which is phenomenal and she just has a different way of for you to mentality when you're going audition she's like don't worry about trying to book that role you're going in there to book the room if mm. they they like you as a person They'll love you as an actor, you know, in a sense okay. of you have to because some, sometimes people can be a great actor, but a but a jerk. So if they love you <laughs> as a person, they'll they'll be able to see the actor in you. You know, of course, you still got to do the work. You got to be good Absolutely. Um, for for her. She says, you know, have fun or quit. It's either you're going to have fun with what you're doing or, you, or quit doing it. Mm. And so that's always been the mentality. Like for me, it's like I'm having fun. When I go on auditions, it's just different now. Mm-hmm. If I don't get it, I'm not mad like I used to be. When I'm like, oh, I didn't get it. If I don't get it, it wasn't meant for me. Yeah. But if I do enough, a good enough a job to where they remember me, they'll bring me back for something else, and then I book that. That the, the, okay. I won the battle. Yeah. So it's just different now. And you, and yeah, you make sure is. that you just do the work. Yeah. You know, have know your objective. What what is it what is it that you're that you're trying to convey when you when you're doing your scenes? What is it that you're trying to tell the audience that they may not they don't know? So you have to tell them what it is that you want them to know. Tell the story. So yeah, so you know diversity is like a really hot topic <laughs> right now. You know in acting, um, I hope that this time it's something that's here to stay because I know when I was younger but, there were so many you know African American shows <sighs> huge like yeah. UPN was booming. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which shows and BET had more content, but then it it just kind of faded away. 
But now we're seeing it again. And I'm right. seeing all types of content that I never thought I would see right. again. How do you feel about seeing African Americans, African American actors now? It's amazing. And, and the thing is, is, I think that, you know, it should never get to the point to where you don't see it. Like, we no. had so many great shows back in the day where it's like, you can you can count on your hand how many, but now, and then it started depleting where it's like, oh my God, like, we don't have anything. I was like, and, what's and going then, on? And then the shows that we do have, it's like, you can have that back, you know, type mm. of thing. So now it's amazing when you see not only black shows, but you see great writing for black African-American um, people like, you know, Sterling K. Brown's on This Is Us, which is an amazing show. I love that show. And they represent us in a, such an amazing way where it tells a real life story between a husband and wife in a black relationship. Like, it's Did you real. watch the latest episode? No, I haven't seen it. Don't tell oh, me. Dang. So hurry up. <laughs> just, it's just, you know, one of those things where you know, I even got a chance to audition for the show. So I was like, oh, my God, like. It's just amazing when you see that type of writing for us. Yes. And we're winning we're winning Emmys and Oscars and all this stuff. Off we're getting of, recognized yeah. for it. And so it's just time. I think it's time to where, you know, diversity is necessary, is needed. And I hope that it continues. And I think we're getting more opportunities. Like you have the Blackish. Now they're having spinoffs. And you're having mm -hmm. The Mayor, which, you know, is a phenomenal show. And you and you, it's not just... African blacks are getting uh, opportunity for new faces, mm -hmm. where the mayor is a new face, mm -hmm. you know, Brandon. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need. We need yeah. to, sh one, we need to get the opportunities and we need to prove that we deserve the opportunities yeah. and make sure that we live in a sense to where we do good work mm -hmm. so that it, it, it now becomes a wildfire. So you feel like it's here to stay this time? I, be I believe so. Because now it's 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 put out there. It's, 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 it's been stuck on the wall and now we get to look at it every time. So when it's not there, that we're like, wait, wait a minute. Where, where's yeah. the diversity at? Where is it yeah. now? That now that it's the elephant in the room. So you have to, yeah, you have to pay attention to it. Yeah, because when I was younger, you know, when I was a teenager, it just felt like I was happy to see right. other black faces on there. But it, something about it just felt like a fad. And obviously, I mean, it, it was like right. no, we weren't putting money into these shows anymore, and it went away. So I absolutely feel like it's here to stay too. Um, there's been so many shows that I'm like, I have to watch this. I have to watch that. Like my, I, on Hulu, I don't have cable now, but right. like, <laughs> I have added so many shows on Hulu. Like Absolutely. my nights are busy, and it's because I'm watching shows with people who look like yes. me, and I want to watch this. Right. You know, so that's really dope. Um, so going back to the Curse Blood biopic, because I know we have to wrap up here pretty soon. We can expect this in 2018, correct? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. You just, you never know. I mean, you know, you put a, you, you put a date on something and maybe, you know, you don't know when it may happen. It's all about, you know, getting all the logistics together yeah. and then, you know, going from there and hopefully, you know, we all don't have other projects lined up, you know, like I'm, yeah. you know, I'm be shooting the, the DPG for Life movie doing, I'm playing Corrupt mm -hmm. um, and the other things that I'm doing as well. So I just want to make sure that we don't rush it mm -hmm. because yeah. that, you know, a lot of people talk about other projects that have been rushed and they're like, oh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to rush anything. No. You know, I want to give it this time. The script has to be phenomenally amazing, Oscar-winning script, oh, and snap. the performances have to be amazing. So we just got to make sure that everything is is taking its time and we let it breathe. Yeah, one thing that really stuck out to me when I was reading through your info is that it has a stamp of approval by Curtis Blow. Yes. Like that is so important. Right. So that afterwards, you know, we don't have to hear him saying like, "Well, I don't like this. I don't mm -hmm. like that." This, you know, they didn't portray me right because that does happen right. sometimes. You know, they don't. People don't get the stamp of approval. Exactly. And there's such, like, negativity that surrounds the project now with, you know, the gossip and rumors. So, like I said, when I read that, that meant a lot to me. I, I really enjoyed seeing that. Um, once it's done, like, I know y'all are still in pre-production. What is it that you want people to know? I want people to know him as, as a man, like, who, who his trials and tribulations, um, talking about, you know, wh how he influenced the hip-hop world. He was the first, Afri you know, first uh, rapper to sign a major deal with Mercury Records, the first, you know, um, rapper to go over to tour overseas. Like, he became commercial. Like, NBA asked him to write this basketball, you know, mm -hmm. so he wrote that song, This is, I'm Playing ba Basketball, and then he had a Sprite commercial. <laughs> that song so, is everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he opened the doors for, for rappers, yeah. like, like, like Jay-Z, like Nas, like Lil Wayne, and all those, you know, so had it not been for him, we wouldn't have the rappers that we have today. And, mm -hmm. you know, it started, he was one of the people it started with. And so, you know, it, it, Rev, Rev, Reverend Run was his DJ. Like, that's that's crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. And now Reverend Run is Run DMC and all. The, so it's just, it's so much. It's yeah. so much. And if people haven't seen Crush Groove, you need to go watch Crush Groove because okay. it'll, it'll open up the doors for a lot of a lot of what you're going to see in the, in the movie as well with everybody that was involved. 
So we're definitely, you know, we want to tell a great story. We want to win some awards. Um, like I'm blessed to be considered for Image Awards right now, for portraying Curse oh, that's Blow. that's awesome. So I'm campaigning right now. They yeah. start voting uh, October 25th, and then uh, uh, nominees are announced, I think, November 13th. Okay. Um, so yeah, so you know, Dope. yeah, so it's, it's some other awards I'm being considered for, so I'm definitely gonna be yeah. uh, talking about that sh- uh, shortly. So awesome. but you have a lot on your plate, so what are some other things that we can probably see from you in the next month, year, <laughs> coming years? Well, I um, I just finished shooting. I'm still in um, post production of this um, film called um, The Price of Fame. It's a Christian based film about the industry, dealing with the casting couch, dealing with um, situations like you know um, agents and managers telling a, a male actor not to promote that he's married so he can sell you know more tickets to the box office, and well, then the deep. wife the wife going you know in she she's. She gets sucked into it. She's like, okay, we can't turn on this money. And then it gets a whole nother situation happens out of that. And then, you know, my character, the manager, is kind of trying to be shicey in certain ways. He, It's all about not trying to compromise your faith, you know, in the sense of for the price of fame. You know, sometimes we will compromise our faith for, to be rich and famous, knowing that it's not right. But because we want that, that fame, we want that fortune, mm-hmm. we feel like, okay, we're going to worship man instead of worshiping God. And it just tells a, a story of different people intertwining, almost like Crash and how they intertwine their stories. Yeah, intertwine. yeah, I like that movie. Okay, is there anything else that we have can expect from you coming up? Yes, uh, um, I wrote a, a project called um, uh, Love Is Never Fair. Okay, and it's a basketball romantic love story. Okay. And um, you know, it, black it, folks love those. Yeah, it, you know, and and I and one, basketball, love and basketball is one of, you know my favorite movies. So it inspired me to write this film. Yeah. You know, and I, I think definitely you know people who love that movie will love this movie. And we had a table read for it, and it was great feedback. It was a lot of laughter, which you know I wasn't you know I wasn't expecting as a writer um, to to get that type of feedback. But okay. you know I, I definitely you know it, it it surprised me, and so now it's like now let's get it even better, so that when we shoot it it's like people will fall in love with it. Dope. So for the people who want to reach you, where can they find you? Uh, MelvinJacksonJr.com, Melvin Jackson Jr., Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Everything is Melvin Jackson Jr., the brand of All Melvin right. Jackson Jr. Dope. Well, thank you so much thank for you. meeting with us. Again, everyone, I'm Ivana Williams, and this has been Spotlight On with Mr. Melvin Jackson Jr. <laughs> he has so much coming up. I'm very excited for your thank career, you. honestly, truly. Thanks again for joining us here on After Buzz TV Spotlight On. Take care. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. See you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 